just about everything we've done this semester has been about taking code, um, or let me rephrase that, has been about re uh, taking uh, and using the framework in such a way that it makes easy doing common tasks. All right? We talked about this in a variety of contexts. I mean, that's the whole point of the ASP.NET controls. Things such as validation is something that's very common. Right. Every web page, every website that has forms is likely to need to do some sort of validation. Uh, the good news is, is we don't have to write that validation um, in many occasions. We can simply use what's in the framework. Um, so that's one big example. Um, we have these building blocks that we can build to do common functionality. Um, our last little unit about custom classes, in a way, is about extending that and writing some of our own components to do things that may not be universal, but are important to our particular organization. Uh, the assignment that you had for calculating tuition at LC, that's something that you would want that code in one place. You would not want that code strewn, strewn about the application. Um, and therefore, you know, you want to give a component or a building block that anyone that needs to calculate tuition can use. Um, we're going to go in and shift gears a little bit, but really it's going to be the same theme. And it's going to be a lot about, um, th this section really, the focus is not so much on the functionality, I guess, although it's hard to separate design and functionality, but we're going to talk about a lot of design issues that websites have in common, all right? And the tools uh, within ASP.NET that help us achieve some of these common design goals. If I was going to identify a list of common design goals, all right, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll introduce these and then we'll go into a little bit more detail about, about them. One common design goal is consistency. We want our pages to look consistent. Consistent isn't the same thing as identical. All pages don't have to have precisely the exact same layout. But it's good for pages to have a consistent look and feel. Why is that? Why is it good to have pages consistent? What risk would you run into if your pages were wildly inconsistent with each other. Yes? Confusing the user. Confusing the user, uh, how so? Uh, like if you can't find the navigation yeah. or something like that. Right. Users get used to seeing the navigation in a certain place. If it's moved from that place, where did it go? All right. Um, users can sometimes be confused if they've gone to a different website, if it, if it truly had a totally different look. All right. So. Um, there's a comfort factor uh, of being in familiar territory, all right? Uh, you know, a lot of people complain about chain restaurants, and, and, and the fact is they're not my favorite places to eat either. That being said, I know if I get a Burger King hamburger here, it's going to taste exactly the same as a Burger King hamburger anywhere in the country, probably the world, all right? So if I'm in the mood for a Burger King hamburger, I know where to go, and I'm likely not to be disappointed, all right? That consistency is comforting in many cases, all right? And it's, it's comforting in terms of website design, all right, that, that you can find stuff in the same place every time. So consistency in wording, would be one thing. One issue that you that, that I've seen is links being called different things in different places. I've seen examples of that where as you know um, um, you know company history versus about us. You know I've seen things like that where they where the same page is given two similar sort of titles. And it gets me confusing. Is that the same page or is that a different page? So consistency in wording. Consistency of layout. So people can find stuff. 
Consistency of colors, fonts. Uh, a, a general rule is things that mean the same should look the same. All right? If something looks different, it should mean something different. Maybe you're emphasizing it, or it's different than the normal stuff that you're doing. What would it be like if every link on your page was blue and underlined except one link? It was green and not underlined. People are going to think, well, what's different about that? Right? People automatically make that assumption without, uh, without even thinking about it. There's a lot that we say with our fonts, with our colors, that's a visual language of sorts. We are communicating stuff to the user about our page and about the way our pages are organized and what we want to emphasize simply based on our visual language, fonts, colors, and so on. It's best to give a consistent message when you're doing that so people know what they're getting. All right. Another goal in design uh, that virtually every website has is navigation. And again, you know, as we alluded to already, consistency is one thing that we want with our navigation. We want things in the same spot. We want things called the same thing. All right. Every website, you know, needs this. Virtually every website. Um, if you listen to people complain about websites, more often than not, the complaint that you will hear will be some variation of I can't find the stuff that I'm looking for. You know, I don't like such and such website. Why not? Well, I can't find anything on it that I want. All right, that's very often is a typical complaint. So navigation is, is clear. Uh, navigation actually exists on a couple different levels. There's first of all the look of the navigation, which we'll talk about. But really beyond that, there's a whole notion of dividing your topic into understandable subtopics. And understandable meaning understandable from the perspective of the people that are visiting the site, not understandable to you. There's a whole area called information architecture that deals with taking complex ideas and dividing them into other ideas. Um, you know, a, a word uh, associated with this is taxonomy. Probably the most common taxonomy that you undoubtedly heard of is how we classify living creatures, right? There are, there are plants and animals. And maybe something else, I don't know. I don't know where bacteria fits in, but we'll forget about them for a while. Under animals, there's vertebrates and non-vertebrates, all right? Under vertebrates, there are birds, there are reptiles or amphibians, there's fish, there's mammals, and maybe something else. I might be forgetting one. All right. And then under mammals, there's dogs, cats, and so on. It's a way of dividing that uh, in a way that makes sense and that's reasonable. Part of your job in navigation isn't just making the links look obvious and keeping a consistent wording. It's dividing a big topic into smaller topics that are understandable to the user. All right. Not understandable from your perspective, but understandable uh, to the user. Very often, I will hear people that develop web pages when they are uh, accused of, of their website being hard to navigate, they'll say, what do you mean? That content's in here. All you have to do is click here, click here, click here, and there it is. All right? It's clear to them because they designed it. It's clear to them because they're sort of an insider to that organization. To people from the outside world, though, it's not clear at all. So you sort of have to put your user hat on or your types of users hat on and see how they're going to view the problem, how they're going to view the issue, all right, and come up with a solution based on that. And then coming up with a navigation that's clear and consistent. Um, I've heard it said that a good navigation should tell people where they are, where they have been, 
and where they can go. In other words, it should be clear that you're on such and such page. It should be clear to say, this is how you got to that page, in case you need to re -step, re retrace your steps. And it should be clear where else you can go. Now, some of these things we've addressed um, in, in just basic web development courses, CISS 216 or whatever, when we've talked about cascading style sheets. Cascading style sheets will be part of the solution here too. But there's some additional tools built into the framework that really help us out with some of these issues that really cascading style sheets don't address. One issue that we had, even with cascading style sheets, is cascading style sheets were good, and if you create an external style sheet, you can go and you can change the look of your page, or all of your pages, just by making one change. The one thing that cascading style sheets didn't address, though, is what if we have to actually change the content of the page? That is, what if we create a website that has seven pages on it, and we create the HTML, we clone our template and have seven pages, we have our CSS, what if someone has an eighth page to that mix? What do we do? CSS doesn't address that. And if your only tool that you're working with is plain old HTML, your only recourse is to go and make that change seven times. All right? Uh, the .NET framework provides some other tools that allow you to do some cool things where as if you're making changes to code that's common in all your pages, you only need to make that change in one place much like you do with CSS. So we're going to consider some of these tools. Uh, there are, uh, the, the first one that we're going to look at are, are master pages. All right. Think of master pages as sort of being a template that you use sort of to clone and extend for each of your individual pages. All right. We're then going to look at different navigational tools that we can use that will make our life easier in some of these areas as well. One thing that, that you have as part of your design of a website are what are called wireframes. And what wireframes are, are little diagrams They indicate the basic structure of the page. And again, if you've had me for CISS 216, you've seen this a million times. All right, we have a banner, a navigation, and a content area. All right, the idea is, is we can sketch that out and we can say maybe, you know, half of our pages fit this pattern. All right. And we can say that maybe the banner area and the navigation area is in common for all those pages. We might then have other pages that fit a similar format, but not identical. Whereas maybe there's a navigation and then a sub-navigation and then a content area. Or maybe a banner a navigation, a content area, and a sidebar of additional topics or whatever. So we can have a variety of wireframes to represent the pages on our site. But the idea is, is we don't have one wireframe per page. You know, if we were sketching out these wireframes and we had a 10-page site, for example, it might be that six of the pages follow this format, Two follow this format and two follow this format. All right, you're is not a, it's not you're not achieving the level of consistency that you need if you truly have ten different wireframes for all ten pages. Okay, master pages allow you to define the common stuff in one file and then reuse it um, over and over and over again. So let's say I'm going to do a website about myself. And I'm going to start out just assuming that there's one basic wireframe and that's the one that 
you know, the simplest one that I've used over and over and over again that looks like this. All right, where I have a banner, navigation, and a content area. This being what varies from page to page to page. And let's say I have, I don't know, four or five pages, my home page, a biography page, a hobbies page, a work history page, and an interesting links page. And I want those to be on the navigation on every single page. Let's start out by building the template for this. All right. So what I'm going to do is create my web application. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a master page. Remember, the master page is going to have that which is common on every single page. So I'm going to go in, open Visual Studio. website, browse, me, all right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to go and create a web form, I'm going to create a master page. I go and click File, New, File, and you'll notice somewhere down, well, right at the top. I thought it was in alphabetical order, but I guess the couple of most common things are, are at the top. So I'm going to create a master page, and it's going to give it a name. I'm going to place code in a separate file. I'm still going to do that because I might have code behind code on the master page as well. All right, there might be, in addition to the visual uh, look of it and the HTML code that's in common from page to page to page, there might also be some, some uh, code that's common from page to page. So I want to include that in its own file. So I click Add, and I get created. Oops. Similar to the ASPX file, if we go out and look at the folder that we created. Similar to with the ASPX file where we have default.aspx and default.aspxvb, we have a master page and a master page vb. I'm going to turn extensions on so that we can see those. or not. And we'll see the master page itself ends in a dot master and the code behind for the master page is dot master dot vb. So I'm now going to go and I'm going to make this page look the way that I want it to. All right. And I'll spend a little bit of time um, getting the uh, appearance the way I want to. But I'm not, uh, I'm, you know, this isn't a class in CSS or a design class, so I'm not going to obsess about making it the perfect looking page. But I am going to go in and I'm going to put my banner section
I'm going to put my navigation section. You blow that up. Thank you. Yes, I will. And I'm going to make this my content div. In my banner, I'm just going to put uh, an H1 that says my Zellers. The man, the legend. Nah. Um. Oh, come on, isn't that funny? <laughs> All right, something like that, just an H1 and an H2. Under navigation, we're going to change this. But for now, I'm going to start with just an un unordered list of links. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to make the links. And I'm going to try to remember the names of the pages I said I'd create. It's griping because default.aspx isn't found yet. That's okay. I know we haven't created that file yet. I know I will, though, but it, I appreciate the reminder. Um, and I'll go in and I'll make the five links I said I would. Biography. Um, what else did I say? Hobbies. work and links. Now, I have my banner. I have my navigation. This content area is what's going to be different from page to page to page, right? The home page is going to have its content. The uh, biography is going to have its content, and so on down the line. So I'm not going to put anything in this, because remember, this just is sort of my template. This is the, 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 the page, um, or, or the stuff, the content, that each page is going to have in common. But do notice this. In the head section and in the body section, there is a content placeholder uh, control. That is where I'm going to have the opportunity on each page that clones this master page to put stuff in. So that content placeholder, again, it's a placeholder. This is where I'm going to put my stuff on each page. All right. Let's go and look at this. This is not... Or actually, we can't look at this, right? We can look at this in the designer. We can't run this because this isn't a web page yet. It's a master page. It's sort of a template for a page. Could, could, you, did, could you go over why it was that you did the content placeholder one as opposed to... What was that? That is where... Remember what our goal is here. Our goal in making the master page is making a page that has the common stuff to every page. Right. All right? So I put the navigation here, and I put the banner here. Now, what is not going to be common on each page? What's going to be different than each page? The stuff that's in this common area. So when I define the home page, the biography, the links page, the hobbies page, here in that placeholder is where the code specific to that page is going to get put. That's, think of that as the blank that I'm going to fill in to take this generic template and make a finished web page for it. Yes? Why do you have one in the head? Just in case there's something I want to put in the head uh, different on each page. So, yeah, there's, you know. Keywords or something. Yeah, any, anything you want to have, some, some specific JavaScript, whatever. So they give, they give you by default one in the head, one in the body, and then if you need to add more, like in some of those examples we had, um, 
a couple different um, couple different content areas, you know, with the sidebar or whatever. You can go and add more, but by default they give you one in each, and, and you can play with that. All right. I'm going to go and look at this, and not very exciting. I'm going to go and I'm going to define some CSS for this. All right. So I'm going to define a file. We'll just do real straightforward CSS. Here I'm just doing basic stuff that I would do in any HTML. I'm going to make the width of the banner 100%. Width of the nav. Thirty percent float left. And the width of the content, sixty percent and float left. Let's see if this looks the way that I want it to. Pardon me? I'm still not. With 100% semicolon. Oh. Usually if you leave that out, it forgives you. But yeah, it is good practice to put that in. So now if we go and look at this, we have to go and we have to associate that style. Margins on here. 